So what's the deal with 5G and the airlines? You may have noticed you already have 5G on your phone, so why are they just now uh, starting to cry about it? So let's look. So we start with the electromagnetic spectrum. So for reference, got some AM radio waves down at low frequency, FM, GPS, very high frequency of stuff like visible light, higher than that is x-rays. So iPhone comes along and, you know, they take up a little bit of the spectrum. You got the 2G, 3G bands, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, but that's about it. And the airplane, they have a bunch of frequencies they're using, really low frequency stuff like beacons, some air to air communication, emergency locator, you know, a lot of navigation, surveillance, communication, you know, they have a radio altimeter, some radars for weather. Um, so then, uh, you know, 4G comes out, you get a little bit more spectrum they're using, uh, starts to grow. At 5G, they just have a ton of spectrum. So higher end, they have like the millimeter wave bands, that's like 30 gigahertz, they send a lot of data. There's just a lot more spectrum where they're really filling in all the gaps in the spectrum. Now, not all of this turns on at once. In fact, a lot of 5G uses the same frequencies that have already been used on 2G and 3G. So for the most part, 5G turns on on your phone and it's not overlapping everything or anything else, anything new, so not a problem. Um, but if we zoom in right now on the radio altimeter, that's at about 4.2 to 4.4 gigahertz. It turns out there's two uh, 5G bands on either side of that, and they give bands stupid names like N77 and N79, and these butt right up against uh, the airplane's radio altimeter. And so the FCC's job is actually to limit this. So they say, hey, you can transmit this much power within the band. Uh, so for instance, this is an N77 transmitter, and you have to transmit much less or below some very low threshold outside of that band. So the FCC will set this back uh, something like this, and everything should coexist nicely. Uh, the radio altimeter as well, they have their own little, uh, they can transmit this much power, and out of band they don't transmit uh, very much at all. Uh, so where's the problem? So the radar has a transmitter and a receiver, and so it'll transmit a signal and receive the same signal uh, either at the same spot or very close to it and use that uh, information to figure out how high in the air it is. Super important for when you're coming in on like a really foggy landing or we don't have good visibility. Uh, this is an analog signal, right? So it doesn't have digital communication, no error correction or encryption or anything like that. So that means it's more sensitive to noise. Um, so if we look at the physics, you know, the power received uh, in the radar is proportional basically how much power you're transmitting from the radar divided by big R to the fourth. And big R is basically the distance between the radar and ground, so the height of the airplane. Little r is the distance between somebody's phone and the radar. So some guy is sitting right by the window uh, trying to turn his phone on, connects to band N77, maybe is much closer to the radar. And the power uh, received from the phone, that's basically uh, the power the ra uh, radar receives from the phone is proportional to the power the phone transmits in band, which again is much, much lower due to FCC limits, but divided by r squared, which is much smaller. So there we have a problem. The power transmitted from the radio is much larger than the power transmitted from the phone in the radar band, but big R is also much, much bigger than little r. So if we look at some numbers, let's say the power transmitted from the radar is 10 watts, which actually we have pretty strong radar. Let's say the power transmitted by the phone uh, in the radar band is called a tenth of a nanowatt, so a very small amount of power. Let's say the plane's at about 5,000 feet coming in for a landing, but the person uh, on the window seat is about 25 feet away from uh, the radar. So if we run the numbers, you get the power transmitted from the phone divided by R squared, you get about, let's call it 1.6 times 10 to the minus 13th. But if we look at the power transmitted by the radar divided by big R to the fourth, we get 1.6 times 10 to the minus 14th. So that means the power received from the phone, even though it started much smaller, is actually 10 times stronger than what the radar uh, got bounced back from the ground. And so you can start to see this is a pretty big problem. And it might not just be this one person who's holding his phone up to the window trying to get better reception. It could be 
One person up in N-77 on this side of the aircraft, another person on N-79 on the other side of the aircraft, and uh, start to see we got a problem here, you know? Uh, basically, you are got to trust that when your airplane needs that radar, which is critical uh, for low visibility uh, landings, uh, that the person sitting on the side isn't trying to turn on their phone to send a quick text before, uh, you know, the airplane actually lands. And that's why they tell you, don't turn on your airplane. Uh, can't have, don't turn on your phone, take it out of airplane mode while you haven't landed because there's some critical equipment that might be uh, affected.